you're just like me and you're completely insane, you just witness 14 hours and 45 minutes of football. And boy, oh boy, college football this week, as expected, week five, separation Saturday has commenced. And it has come to an end. And now we get to reflect on everything. First, let me talk about this FCS game that I did watch tonight. Who boy. who boy. And I won't talk about all of the top five in the FCS first. I want to get the FCS out the way before we get to the, to the FBS, the big boys. Um, James Madison survived. Um, they were, you know, they were not doing too good um, in their game earlier. I forgot who they played. Sam Houston State in the Battle of the Piney Woods in NRG Stadium. I know a friend of mine was out there in NRG Stadium um, complaining about the bands. But they were down 20-6 to to Stephen F. Austin at one point. But they came back and won that game. So they're still number one in the country in the FCS. So not just yet. North Dakota State got in a dog fight with North Dakota. But North Dakota State, obviously, you know, as they have been doing for years and years now, just keeps winning. And in the game, the really the game, the game one of the biggest games of this week, again, this is the game that I highlight, uh, one of my big six highlight games of the week. I had it bolded, and Eastern Washington and Montana put up a show. Uh, let me tell you, Eric Berrier and company put up 600 yards. 600 yards and it still didn't look like it was it was barely enough 600 yards was barely enough to get past Montana you know Mont this was back and forth I mean Montana's defense was balling out you know they were the turf monster and the defense was getting at Eric Berry and company I mean this was I mean this was crazy even a um, Malik Flowers' 99-yard kick return. Crazy stuff for, for Montana. Crazy stuff in this game, man. This was one hell of a game. And rumors are circulating now, thanks to ESPN's announcers, you know, kind of ruining the surprise. We might see game day go to a Big Sky game soon. Who knows? We'll find out. We'll find out soon. But yeah, FCS... Again, glad to have covered it this week. I'm really glad because, man, if we if we got stuck with like a terrible Pac-12 game, you know, as ex as expected, you know, I, I would have been real mad. And speaking of the Pac-12, we'll talk about the Pac-12. We'll talk about everybody here real quick, real really. But let's get get to these Friday games first because there were a couple of games on Friday nights. Now Maryland. Talia, Takvailoa, and company were not good against Iowa. Seven turnovers. Six of them. Interceptions. Iowa basically came into Maryland's home turf. They, they beat up on them turtle shells. They, we're, talking, we're talking they Mario punched them turtle shells. This was bad. 51-14. I, I, I said, you know, Iowa, don't get caught lacking. Don't don't get caught sleeping against Maryland. But and they proved me wrong. That defense proved me wrong. You know, you know, Petrus does his thing, you know, and, and the Iowa offense does their thing, you know, they you know, they do their thing on offense, the same thing that Kirk Ferentz has been doing since like nineteen forty five, you know, but I mean, man, smooth, efficient, with a dominant defense. That 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 is a recipe for success. Now Iowa gets the turn to Penn State, and a big matchup looms, and we are gonna cover that matchup like it's nobody business um, on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, BYU, on the other hand, you know, um, it, it was definitely a struggle at times for BYU. It was definitely a struggle, but you know. In the end, Tyler Algier basically ran all over Utah State. You know, Baylor Romney got hurt, so um, Conover, the third string quarterback, comes in as well. So, you know, now BYU has quarterback depth. 
that is crazy good, man. And, and, you know, despite the fact that, you know, Utah State was able to exploit, you know, BYU at times, they didn't run the ball very well. They only had, what, 20 yards rushing? So, um, the Aggies, you know, two straight losses for them. BYU continues to roll on undefeated. Now, next up for the Cougs is a struggling Boise State team. I mean, this Boise State team isn't very good at all. Like, I'm sitting here like, man, what happened to this team? They have, what, two or three losses now? What's, what's wrong with them? This isn't, this isn't the Boise State I remember. This is not the Boise State I remember, man. All right, let, let's get into the Saturday stuff, because this is the big stuff right here. Georgia came in, said, oh, well, you know, we're not going to... We're not going to show any mercy. And that's exactly what they did against Arkansas. They did not show any mercy. This defense, unreal. Second straight shutout. A blocked punt to boot as well. And Arkansas will be tumbling out of the top ten. Their CFP hopes are just are pretty much going to be dashed right then and there. I mean, they have a murderer's row to get through, and we all know that Arkansas has the pretty much the toughest schedule in the country every single year. You know, and th this year did not give them any favors. You know, with Georgia, you know, and, and the rest of the SEC West. I mean, Arkansas is going to have a have a tough time. And, you know, now that we know some other things too about the SEC. Um, yeah, I, I, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen, man. This is going to be a weird season for the Southeastern Conference, you know. Maybe aside from, like, a couple teams at the top, as we, we both know who those top teams are at the moment. But, you know, for the rest of the SEC, going to be weird. Going to be a weird time for everybody. So, and we're still sitting here confused because now the Heisman contenders that we now talk of what we've been talking about for the past couple weeks like Spencer Rattler who has a good Sam Howell who has a little, who has a little too good or anything like that and then North Carolina's off the radar at this moment you know um, Matt Corral and we'll talk about him in a minute not well not really it's more so much of Lane Kiffin but I'll get to that but now who do you, who do you think is winning the Heisman now who is your pick who who is it who is it you you may be asking who my pick is, and my pick right now, my pick right now, <laughs> it's a very biased pick, and that is B. John! B. John Robinson, that's right. I am picking B. John Robinson as it stands right now. I mean, this is the guy that ran for 200 plus yards against TCU, ran all over the Horn Frogs, he's been running like crazy this entire season. And, you know, credit to TCU, they did play the Horns very, very tough. In fact, I mean, it felt like the Horns should have won by a lot more. But, I mean, again, you know, there was just, it, it was tough. It was tough at times, you know. But finally, the Horns got over the hump of TCU because TCU has been a thorn in their side for so long. But this was the type of win you need. This is the type of win that the Longhorns need heading into the Red River rival. The Red River Showdown, the Red River Shootout, whatever you want to call it, you know, in the Cotton Bowl. So that's the kind of momentum that they need. Now, this defense still needs a little bit of work. You know, again, you know, TCU was getting past these defenders at times, but I mean, again, TCU committed way too many turnovers. We're talking like three of them at least in this game. You know, way too many turnovers. And that, that's the type of stuff that Texas has been thriving off of, is getting the turnovers. Forget about yards, forget about, you know, allowing points. The real magic that this team has been doing this year is getting turnovers. I'm loving that. I'm really loving that. And as far as, you know, loving that, Michigan fans are going to be loving the fact that they dominated Wisconsin. You know, it wasn't really pretty or anything. You know, it was close for a little bit while. Once Graham Mertz got hurt, you know, that was pretty much it for Wisconsin. Wisconsin is now one and three. Just, 
or, yeah, they're one and three because I, I think they took a bye or something like that earlier um, in the season. But yeah, Wisconsin's not a good team, not a good team at all, man. Just this is rough for the Badgers. Really rough stuff. Whew, bad. Now Michigan's got to face off against a resurgent Nebraska team. You know, it's a Nebraska team that's been steadily improving this year. And again, I, I, I genuinely don't know. But we'll talk about Michigan, Nebraska, and a bunch of other big time Week Six matchups again Tuesday or, or yeah Tuesday. Um, Wake Forest again. They had to play Louisville tough because Louisville is one scrappy bunch, and thankfully Wake Forest had a kicker who was clutch. And, you know, finally a kicker comes in clutch because there was some college kickers moments today. College kickers were missing kicks, missing PATs, missing extra points, you know, missing kicks that were from, what, 20 yards out and stuff like that. And I'll talk about that when I get to the Cincinnati um, Notre Dame part of this video here. But, I mean, golly, thankfully Wake Forest said, yo, Let's not have our kicker be completely incompetent, you know. So, and actually, up next here on my um, on my notes here is Cincinnati. Cincinnati, they have the pretty pretty much one of the biggest wins of the season. They did what they needed to do. This was their statement to say this is this is our time. This is the time for a team that's outside the Power Five to get into the college football playoff. This is it right here. This is us. This is what we want, and we're gonna tr we're gonna try our damnedest to take it. We're gonna try and go up in here and make noise, and that's exactly what they did. They came into Notre Dame Stadium, and they made noise. Three turnovers for Notre Dame. Jack Cohn pretty much benched again for Pine came in in the second half and, you know, rallied Notre Dame a little bit, but by then it was pretty much too late. This this game was not as close as the score indicated now. Cincinnati's kicker, on the other hand, oh my goodness, he left seven points off the board by missing kicks. That's not a recipe for success. That's the one thing Cincinnati has to fix is their kicking situation, you know, and, I mean, good God. Because I mean, this this could have been this could have been a whole lot worse, you know. This could have been a whole lot worse for Notre Dame. This could have looked even uglier than it, well, than the score indicated. But man, I'm man, I'm glad to be watching Desmond Ritter out there slinging it and running it. Because that man can ball. I've been saying this since last year. That man can ball. That man can throw that ball. You know, run the Cincinnati offense smoothly. And I mean things are just looking, you know, nice, nice, nice for the for the Bearcats now. Now, now that the Bearcats have conquered, you know, non-conference play, the AAC is wide open, and ready for challengers. But there is a little bit of a catch here. SMU and Houston are seeming to be the threats here, and not UCF, like you know originally indicated, because UCF. They shat the bed against Navy today. Navy has not looked good all season, but Navy finally got something together. I mean, remember, Navy was under a whole lot of nonsense for basically firing their entire like defense early in the season. Y'all remember that? And now, you know, the Gus bus is not doing too good for the Knights. I don't know what's going on out there. That something needs to that something needs to happen. So the AAC, you know, it's looking kind of it's looking kind of weird this year, you know, because we expect I expected UCF to have the talent necessary. But again, they got some injuries. You know, Dylan Gabriel got injured, and now we're looking at SMU and Houston as the biggest challenges to Cincinnati, along with Memphis as well. So. You know that that I'll just keep those three teams in mind. And Navy's always, you know, Navy. They run the flex bone spread option. So you know, Navy's always Navy. So we'll be keeping a big eye on Cincinnati. You know, they are gonna move up in these polls a lot this week. They're gonna move up. They're going to move up because of what happened. You know, I'll, I'll briefly get over here and talk about Ohio State, Coastal Carolina, and Penn State. 
all three of these teams dominated their opponents today. Congrats to them. Ohio State dominated Rutgers as usual. You know, Coastal Carolina beat up on UL Monroe. And, you know, that's, that's what the first time that Coastal beat UL Monroe, which is a surprising fact to learn. And Penn State got their revenge against Indiana. Good for them. Good for all three of these teams. There's really nothing else to talk about about all three of them. Again, Penn State has the big matchup next week. You know, and I was worried about Ohio State for a little bit. But obviously that did not matter. C.J. Stroud was balling out. That did not matter at all. Um, Oklahoma, as we get into you know some of these other big games, you know after we get into that in betweener with Cincinnati and Notre Dame, these 3:30 Eastern you know games, Oklahoma struggled again with Kansas State. They struggled again. You know Spencer Rattler got back in the form a little bit, but he threw a bad, bad interception in this game. He threw a bad interception and kept Kansas State in it. And, you know, I mean, there were multiple, multiple plays, you know, against this Oklahoma defense that kept Kansas State in this game. And, I mean, they almost got two onside kicks. They didn't They didn't get the first one because of ref ball, and the second one, you know, didn't get recovered. But, I mean, Kansas State kept this game way closer than it needed to be. And, you know, it felt like Oklahoma was going to blow out Kansas State at first. But then, you know, I mean... Obviously, that did not happen. That didn't happen. Defense, defense was getting put right back onto the field. You know, Kennedy Brooks was dominating on that. On was dominating this Kansas State D line. You know, running all over them. It felt like, you know, he, that's what I saw. But you know, Oklahoma apparently just did not know what to do. You know, at certain points in this game, they didn't know what to do, and I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Tisk tisk. Oklahoma is due for a loss. They're beyond due for a loss, and I'm thinking they might tumble even further in the polls. You know, you know, they're, they're gonna tumble. I think they'll tumble at least one spot. They'll they'll fall at least one spot because of Cincinnati's win. You know, at least they'll have they'll have to either stay at the same position, maybe move up one. Unfortunately, but Oklahoma's just not looked like a top tier team this year and it's got it's got to stop and I'm hoping that next week you know proves that this Oklahoma team is not for real they may be for, they may be for real but you know you know now now next week is you know one of their biggest tests against Texas and again Oklahoma's just not looked very good this year man speaking of teams that did not look very good we thought Alabama Ole Miss was going to be another barn burner. As soon as Lane Kiffin, you know, threw off the headset, threw it at, um, threw it at the CBS sideline reporter, you know, basically just told her to get out the popcorn, told us to get out the popcorn. We we weren't snacking on no popcorn. We were not, because Ole Miss got smacked by Alabama. Due to arrogance and incompetence by Lane Kiffin, this was pure. That arrogance before the game started really set this off. As soon as you know we actually got into the game, multiple times, fourth down. What are we doing? Going for it on fourth down in places we don't need to be going for it on fourth down. Take the points. God, wow. Why isn't hashtag college coaches a thing on Twitter? Am I the only person tweeting that on Twitter? Hashtag college coaches for dumb decision making. Hashtag college coaches. That's what that means. Dumb decision making. And Lane Kiffin made too many, too many of these dumb decisions early in this game that doomed Ole Miss very, very quickly. You know, you have to, you have to get something on Alabama. You have to get something. You know, you have to keep them off guard. And you didn't do that, Lane. You didn't do that. So now, look at that. Another assistant L to Nick Saban. Another assistant L to Nick Saban. Ole Miss is their playoff hopes are basically in the, in the shitter as well with Arkansas. So you know they'll battle. It. Arkansas and Ole Miss will battle it out, you know, next week. But for all intents and purposes, put those two teams off to the side. NC State, on the other hand, they struggled a little bit with Louisiana Tech, but they get their victory there. 
it is what it is there. You know, for the Wolfpack, you know, they obviously, you know, we're in a little bit of a hangover after the big win against Clemson. And speaking of Clemson, they barely survive against Boston College. I hate the fact that they're still in the top 25. I really do. They, they shouldn't be. Because, I mean, the ACC is on a collision course of chaos. There is so much chaos in the ACC right now, I have no idea what's going on. Like, North Carolina beat Duke. Beat them down bad. Pitt beat Georgia Tech. Beat them down bad. I have no idea what's going on in this in this conference. Clemson has looked like doo-doo. NC State beat them. Wake Forest is undefeated. The only undefeated team left in the ACC is Wake Forest. I have no idea what's going on with the ACC right now, man. I really don't. I don't. Let me talk about the Pac-12. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about that. Stanford. Oregon. Big time game on ABC. This, this game was clearly, clearly Stanford, you know, was dominating this game. For most of this game. You know, Oregon came back and made it interesting. And, you know, they even took the lead late. But a combination of some, you know, bad penalties, and obviously both sides are victim of ref ball. You know, you, ref ball does not discriminate. Okay, we, we've discussed this at ad nauseum so many times that ref ball does not discriminate. It didn't discriminate against Texas TCU earlier either because those were there were a bunch of bad calls in that game. But in this game right here, a bunch of bad calls. You know, and. The, you know, some of these calls were justified, some of them were not. And some of these late calls, you know, especially, you know, when time expired and Stanford got another chance at it, that was definitely justified. Definitely justified right there. And Stanford got their chance, got their opportunity, took it to overtime, and won this game in overtime. You know, Anthony Brown threw a pass. And it was incomplete on the sideline, which is rather unfortunate. And thus, you know, coupled with the fact that C.J. Burdell got injured, and a bunch of other injuries in this game. I mean, to both these teams were having injuries left and right. So coupled with that, and then, you know, later in the night, Arizona State decided to beat up on UCLA. Back 12 is on life support. Life support playoff hopes. Again, Oregon is still technically in this, but I'm going to write off the Pac-12 right now for the most part because I don't think the Pac-12 has enough, you know, a as a conference, you know, to get themselves into it. And I know, I know, I know there's still a chance for Oregon to get all the way in. It's just going to take some things now. It's going to take a lot of things because from now, because of Fresno State's loss, that, that definitely brings things back back down to earth a little bit. And the UCLA game has lost its luster. It's lost a little bit luster. Right there. And the rest of the Pac-12 is either, you know, you have Oregon State leading the North, or you have a mess in the Pac-12 South. We're talking a complete mess. And I believe or I mean I believe Arizona State is leading the Pac-12 South, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just a total mess in the Pac-12 right now. A mess that needs to be fixed. And it's not going to be fixed easy, you know. You still, you still want Oregon, you know, for the Pac-12. You still want Oregon to get to the college football playoff because they have the biggest win of the season against Ohio State. So, again, things are going to get interesting, you know, down the line. Um, why did what? Why did Michigan State allow 31 points to Western Kentucky? Why was there a belly flopper in the Purdue game? We're talking this this woman earlier in, in the day just decided to belly flop in a pool of rainwater. Crazy stuff right there, man. Crazy stuff. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll talk. And speaking of Fresno State stay here. Uh, yeah. Six turnovers against Hawaii. Hawaii came back 17 straight unanswered points. And beat Fresno State. So Fresno State, well, now they have two losses. There's, there's an undefeated team in the Mountain West, but it's Wyoming, which is crazy. 
crazy stuff. Wyoming's on by this week. I'll, I might talk about Wyoming next week, so uh, under the radar game next week. So uh, let me go back to the SEC. Let me go back to the SEC real quick here. Um, before, before, wait a minute. Before that, um, Oklahoma State. Well, yeah. Before we talk about the SEC, Oklahoma State. You know, on the other hand, they keep themselves in a good position. Despite the fact that they had a lot of turnovers with Spencer Sanders, you know, Spencer Sanders threw like three picks. And, you know, Baylor was throwing picks back, so don't worry about it. But Oklahoma State bullied Baylor on the, in, on the ground. At one point, Baylor only had one rushing yard. And I'm serious, I saw the stat line. One rushing yard. That is not a recipe for success, you know. Not a recipe for success. And, you know, 24-14 right there, you know, Oklahoma State got it done. Got it done. Now, Oklahoma State, you know, they 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 cannot, you know, look too far ahead. They have Texas in a couple weeks. They, they have those horns in a couple weeks, so we'll see what they can do against my long horns. You know. But, again, I'm not really particularly high on the Big 12 this year. I mean, obviously Texas already has a loss. Oklahoma's looked terrible. Baylor has a loss now. Iowa State has multiple losses. Kansas State, you know, has multiple losses as well. And Oklahoma State still not sold on them, but they're undefeated. So, all right, all right. Let's go back to the SEC here. Let's go back to the SEC now. Um, Kentucky. How about that? They have ended. Florida's college football playoff hopes with great crowd noise, great running game, strong defense, and Florida's incompetence. Like, this is similar to the Ole Miss type of incompetence. Dan Mullen, I, we, we've been talking about this for weeks. What is Dan Mullen doing at quarterback? He's still doing a two-quarterback system. What is, Anthony, what is Anthony Richardson not proving to Dan Mullen? Because Emory Jones has not looked too good out there. Sure, he's got, sure he's got some he's got some decent stats, but this isn't this isn't about being decent. This is about being a college football playoff contender. And I was wondering why wasn't Florida running the ball? They were throwing the ball way too much. They threw it like thirty something times. Got to run the ball. Kentucky was able to get in the Florida's heads with with the crowd, and that was able to cause a lot of penalties. This is the type of stuff right here, man. This is the type of stuff that, you know, ain't going to get you the SEC championship. You have two losses now, Florida. Your college football playoff hopes are done, and your SEC hopes may be done as well. Speaking of teams whose SEC and CFP hopes are probably done as well, how about it, Texas A&M? Congratulations. You know, you don't have a quarterback that can, you know, be clutch anymore. And I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I just don't know, man. Like, the, the Aggies lost Kellen Munn, and they thought Haynes King was going to be the guy, but King got injured. And Zach Calzada, who's apparently been here for a while, you know, just hasn't picked things up very well. He, I mean, he's, he's still, at times, you know, just not looking too good out there. And I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong with this Aggies team. You know, even at one point, safety... You know, at one point late in this game, and Mike Leach used ball control. This is this isn't the same Mike Leach. Remember now, this isn't the same Mike Leach from back in the day where he just throw the ball all the time. You know, 90% of the time shallow cross. Different strategy, different strokes for different folks, and that's exactly what happened. Ball control. They had the ball for over 30 minutes. Mississippi State did. Congrats to the Bulldogs. They've done it again. Basically proven. Basically proven that another team with high expectations coming off, you know, a huge season. Last year was LSU. And then now it's Texas A&M. You know, both LSU last year and Texas A&M this year had high expectations for them. And they have shot the bed. Texas A&M especially. Now they have two losses out of the CFP race completely and 
and their and their SEC hopes are likely done. This is no there's no way they're gonna get through the murderer's row that is the SEC West like this. Playing like this. Go ahead. Speaking of murderer's row, I don't know how Bo Nix was able to make all these plays tonight against LSU. I really don't know how. He grabs that Auburn magic that has been so lucky over the past few years. We're talking Auburn magic is a crazy, crazy statistic that does not warrant, you know, the, the, the type of talk it doesn't get. It, 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 you know, it needs to be talked about more because the Auburn type luck is crazy good. I mean, this is this is some crazy stuff, man. Bo Nix was able to lead this Auburn team back against LSU, you know, and I mean. Now LSU has two losses. You can count them out of, you know, obviously, you know, that loss to UCLA earlier in the season really dampened a lot of things, but this really messed things up for LSU. And now they have two losses as well. So, you know, a lot of SEC teams aren't looking too good to start off the season, you know. But Auburn, Auburn found a way to win against the Tigers in Death Valley. They found a way to win that game. And now Auburn has a big matchup next week with Georgia. That's right. It's going to be a big week next week. And I know this video is very, very long, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. We, we, we had a lot of stuff to cover. There's a lot of stuff to cover. My goodness, man. We... This has been a... one hell of a week. Separation has been made very, very clear. Again, a lot of people are going to say at the end of the day that that Georgia should be number one or Alabama and Georgia are the two most dominant teams in college football. Again, personally, I think Georgia should be number one. Personally, that's what I think. You know, Georgia should be the number one team in the country. They have a big win against they, they basically blew out Clemson without blowing them out. And they beat and they beat up on Arkansas like that. We haven't seen Bama play Arkansas yet, but we know that they will play. And obviously, Bama beat up on an overrated Miami team, always overrated Miami team. So we can't really say anything about that yet. And now the Florida win means really nothing at this point because Florida shot the bit against a undefeated Kentucky. And you know both. Really, both Florida and not Florida, both Georgia and Alabama have shown signs of weakness. So again, I don't think both of those teams are going to magically escape unscathed. There's going to be some scares, and there might be a loss among both of them if they get caught lacking. And I'm thinking they might get caught lacking by somebody. It's not going to be Ole Miss, obviously, but you know, it it wasn't Ole Miss. It wasn't. It wasn't Florida for Alabama either. It wasn't Clemson for Georgia. It certainly wasn't Arkansas, you know, today for the Bulldogs. So there's, there's going to be more tests for both these teams down the road. Personally, another tech, another little takeaway I have from this week is that Cincinnati, again, Cincinnati is basically going to prove that, you know, firstly, that we don't really need to expand the college football playoff. We don't really need to actually... I mean, the only, again, the only reasonable expansion, I think, is to eight. That's it. That's all I really want is eight teams. You know, five Power Five champions and the highest ranked group of five champions. And two at largest. But obviously, we can't trust Pac-12 on anything, so that's going to have to be changed at some point. So, you know, but again, four feels like the perfect number now. Now, there's going to be a Big Ten team. We just don't know who which Big Ten team it is yet. I don't know if it'll be a Pac-12 team. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. There's, de there's definitely not going to be an ACC team in there unless it's Wake Forest. That'd be crazy. Oh man, this is this has been a weird year already, man. 2021 is shaping up to be the weirdest season of college football yet. You know with the way it's been going. Nine top 25 teams fell this week. Nine. It's going to be some shake-up. 
big shakeups in the rankings. Let me tell you that much. It's my last takeaway, really. So the Horns will be back in the top 25. There's going to be teams like you know SMU, uh, you know Wyoming, who are still undefeated. I think you know there's a couple. Of, I think there's a couple other teams that are still undefeated, not from uh, power conferences yet. You know, there's gonna be there's gonna be some there's gonna be some really really fun teams you know to watch over the next couple of weeks. We're gonna see them shuffle in and out of the top 25. I think again it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, man. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for the next week. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to get a get a good idea of what the schedule is going to be like as far as what I'm going to watch next week. But I guarantee you, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be always a nice time. So like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do all that other good stuff, and I will see you all Monday for the NFL recap. Take care everybody, have a good night.